Over the past few weeks, it's become clear that Donald Trump wants the election to be a referendum, not on the biggest domestic failure of government in our life on the COVID response, but instead on chaos in the streets. Not the actual chaos or the actual streets or the real problems with police, but this fever dream of Antifa and what needs to be done. And that somehow the more violence there is in American streets, the more an indictment it is of some future America where Joe Biden is president, which he's not now. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know what? Some shows have complex plots and I'm trying to catch you up for season two. So is Joe Biden up for that attempted frame switch, attempting to make the narrative of the election about that? Well, unfortunately, here's a bit of Joe Biden yesterday. I wanna make it absolutely clear, something very clear about all of this. Rioting is not protesting, looting is not protesting, setting fires is not protesting. None of this is protesting, it's lawlessness, plain and simple. And those who do it should be prosecuted. Violence will not bring change, it'll only bring destruction. It's wrong in every way, it divides instead of unites. Destroys businesses, only hurts the working families that serve the community. It makes things worse across the board, not better. No, it's not what uh, Dr. King or John Lewis taught, and it must end. Okay, so uh, look, he's saying don't you know don't break things, don't burn things, don't kill people. Obviously, uh, you know agree with that message clearly. But this is, I would say, and feel free to disagree, Dan. This is Joe Biden going on the defensive on territory that isn't his, that Trump has told him he needs to defend. And so now that's what he's responding to and denouncing people that have nothing to do with him, acts that are exaggerated or non-existent. It just, it seems like a terrible strategy. And I worry that Joe Biden doesn't get what's going on. No, that's a really astute observation, John. Um, the, the way to attack Trump and go against Trump, and I think one of the, um, excellent cases to be made about Kamala Harris and Bernie Sanders, if we're talking about the context of the Democratic primary in 2020, were that I think those two candidates understood most of all that in order to go against Trump, we need to go on the attack. Trump is not going to be the kind of person who, he's going to be shooting so many attacks at you that playing defense is almost accepting what he is saying as true. A lot of slash most of what he's saying isn't true. And I think a lot of people know that and understand that. So that's an excellent opportunity as a politician running against him to uh, take back control of the narrative and set the record straight. Um, Of of course, there's always the open question that we won't know until the votes are cast or are they coming this November. But to what extent does the messaging that the Donald Trump campaign has towards painting Biden as a socialist, like to what extent are people actually believing that? I don't really know if regular everyday Americans are believing that. Like the decision of getting Joe Biden and electing Joe Biden was very clearly the not socialist decision. If Bernie Mm -hmm. Sanders has any sort of usefulness in the story of the Democratic Party as to what they are trying to frame themselves as right now, which is a Republican light party, is that the Democratic Party um, base had the opportunity to accept socialism and that didn't happen. Of course, that happened because of a late February rat orgy, but it didn't happen. <laughs> and so you can at bare minimum say that the party rejected that kind of um, leftist insurgent ideology. And so yeah. I don't think even, I think I agree with you. It's wrong for Joe Biden to just accept what the, the, the stance that Trump is making him have to defend. Mm-hmm. When, yeah, and, and look, it's not that he doesn't then turn and say that the, the chaos is directly related to Trump. He does, and we might we might turn to it. So I wanna ask you a more general question. The, the, the Biden campaign strategy seems to be, uh, hey everybody, uh, Joe Biden is kind of nice, and he's not crazy in any of the ways that Donald Trump is crazy. And that's pretty much it. And I know that a lot of leftists instinctively say that that's obviously not going to work. I'm inclined to think that it's not going to work, that it's not a strong way. But 
assuming that Biden is not trying to win over leftists, but thinks that he can win by getting some Republicans to switch over some centrists. Do you think that that strategy of Biden's kind of a nice guy and he probably doesn't want to kill you like Donald Trump does. Do you see that being a winning strategy? How comfortable as of today do you feel about November if that's the way this campaign is going to be run? That's a, I would reframe that question only slightly. And in my perspective, Joe Biden's strategy is to not rock the boat on public opinion of Joe Biden. He's, mm -hmm. he's kind of damned if he does, damned if he doesn't, where if Joe Biden doesn't speak until November. Um, my blood pressure will go down because it'll have fewer opportunities to mess up. But <laughs> we'll have fewer opportunities to judge him, or we might actually go into the how is his health court sort of thing. So because of that, Joe Biden has to speak. But yeah, Joe Biden speaking is a significant problem most of the time. So he just like gets into <laughs> gaps too easily. So Joe Biden has to walk this tightrope of being visible and standing up as the like non Trump option while also not really saying anything too substantive or rocking the boat at all. Because like we said, I've had I've, I've gotten all of my anger about this choice that the Democratic Party has gone with, but they've gone with the ease, the, the least resistance to having that imaginary centrist middle of the road Republican voter picking Biden over Trump as possible. They want to have that yeah. least amount of resistance as possible. And the more Joe Biden gets into even slightly the nuance of um, more has been taken from African Americans in this country than any riot can possibly cut, like make up for. It, mm -hmm. it, Joe Biden can't touch that because even though I strongly agree that's the right point, and maybe you get Joe Biden to crack open a cold one, maybe he'll agree with you. But <laughs> he. He cannot make that point because he needs to be the path of least resistance for saying for being a referendum on Donald Trump. Will that yeah. will that work? I, I hope so, um, but I don't know. I just see that as being his strategy and that as being his um, restraints. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.